Hello, ladies, and welcome to Real Life Conversations. I am so excited, as I always am, because you know what I'm going to say. We have another amazing guest with us tonight. Well, as you know, our topic tonight is the S word. No, not that one. Not submission. <laughs> Sex and the single woman. We're going to talk about it tonight. We're going to look at different passages of scripture and just kind of really break it down. Now, if you have little ones, little ears in the room, and you don't want them to hear this content, we'd ask that you take this time while we read the scriptures and to get your earbuds or something, because it's going to be a great conversation, but it may be some content you don't want them to hear. All right, let's jump right on in. Grab your coffee, grab your tea, grab your Bible, and join me. Tonight, we're going to talk about sex. You know the song is going through my head, right? Let's jump in. First Corinthians chapter six, right? We're going to read chapter six. We're going to start at verse 12, probably go all the way to chapter seven, verse nine. And if you don't have opportunity right now, maybe you're jogging or walking or driving, just crank it up and we'll read it for you. Here we go. First Corinthians chapter six, starting at verse 12. And it says, all things are lawful for me but not all things are profitable. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be mastered by anything. Come on, keep that in mind. I will not be mastered by anything. Verse 13, food is for the stomach and the stomach is for food, but God will do away with both of them. Yet the body is not for immorality, but for the Lord. And the Lord is for the body. Now, God has not only raised the Lord, but will also raise us up through his power. Come on, somebody, you got to say amen, right? Now, verse 15, do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take away the members of Christ and make the members of a prostitute? May it never be. Or do you not know that the one who joins himself to a prostitute is one body with her? For he says, the two shall become one flesh. Verse 17, but the one who joins himself to the Lord is one spirit with him. Flee immorality. My paraphrase, get your Gucci and go. Flee immorality. Every other sin that a man commits is outside the body. But the immoral man sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? We're going to talk about ownership, ladies. You are not your own. For you have been bought with a price. Therefore, therefore, you know what they always say? What is the therefore, therefore? It's therefore glorify God in your body. Now let's move on to chapter seven. Now, concerning the things about which you wrote, it is not good for a man not, it is, it is good, let's get this straight, let's start over. Now, concerning the things about which you wrote, it is good for a man not to touch a woman, but because of immoralities, each man is to have his own wife, and each woman is to have her own husband. Verse three, the husband must fulfill his duty to his wife, and likewise also the wife to her husband. Don't worry, ladies. This is for singles. We're not going to jump in here tonight, but we'll come back to this for sure. Verse four, the wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. And likewise, also, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Verse five, stop depriving one another, except by agreement for a time, so that you may devote yourselves to prayer and come together again so that Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Verse six, but this I say by way of concession, not of command. Yet I wish that all men were even as I myself am. However, each man has his own gift from God, one in this manner and another in that. Verse eight, but I say to the unmarried and to the widows, that is good for them if they remain even as I. Here we go. Last one, verse nine. But if they do not have, what's that word there? If they do not have self-control, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn with passion. 
Amen, ladies. Well, overall, big picture, here's what we're going to conclude with, just in case you have to go and you can't watch this all the way to the end. We're going to talk about desires and from the perspective of I want what I want when I want it, no matter what it is. And I want it more than I want a strong, committed relationship to the Lord. Come on, say that with me. I want what I want when I want it and how I want it more than I want a strong, committed relationship with the Lord. That's going to be where we're going to round this out here in the next 20 minutes. All right, let me bring on our guest. She is a dear friend of mine. You know her. She's been on the Real Life Conversation show before. Mrs. Penny Staten, come on in the room, girl. Come on in. I am in the room. Hey, my dear friend. Look, as I say, let's set it off, girl. Let's get let's it going. Set it off tonight. <laughs> Well, for the ladies who maybe didn't hear your introduction before, tell the ladies a little bit about yourself. My name is Mrs. Penny Staten, and I'm married to Dr. Stephen Craig Staten, the first, as he would like to say. <laughs> and together we share a ministry uh, called Reboot. And we work with uh, smaller churches in growth and uh, leadership development. Mm -hmm. On the side, my own personal ministry is 52 ministries. And I work with young ladies, uh, mostly who are not married yet or who have been married, who have had some broken moving parts in their lives, uh, connect with the word of God and learn how to apply the word of God to their lives. So I don't know if you would call me a mentor or a life coach. I would call myself a Bible teacher. All 52 right. Ministries. 52 and so that's ministries. what I'm doing now. Amen. Now, how can they find you? Uh, well, actually, I have started tweeting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh -huh. Penny Sue, S-U, Staten, S-T-A-T-E-N, at 52 Ministries. And then I'm also on Instagram, 52.Ministries. All right, Penny Sue. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> well, ladies, before we get started, remember, if you are enjoying the content and we definitely want others to hear this. Listen, let me remind you, my goal is to bring you ladies from all across the world, ladies that are really out here sharing the word of God, teaching the word of God, uh, edifying the saints. I want to bring you different ladies, but I really would love for us to be able to move this in the social media realm. So if you would right now, hit the like button, as we like to say, smash, 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 smash the like button. And please take a moment and share it right now, because I think tonight, married or single, we will be able to give some information from the word of God. So like, share, and please follow the page. And if you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to hit the subscribe button right now. All right, let's jump right on in. Okay. So let's talk about this, sex and the single woman. Now that's just a mouthful all by itself, right? <laughs> right. <That's, laughs> I lived it, yes. Right. Well, let's yeah, I want to talk a little bit about that. Can you tell us a little? You were single for a very long time. Most How did you, life. most of your adult life? Yeah, so I think you would be a good person to talk about the desires from the perspective of a single lady. Maybe give us a little of your testimony. How did you handle that? What were your thoughts and concerns on this matter? And how did you view sex as a single woman? Uh through stages. At first, okay. sex was uh, something that I toyed with because I thought it was just a part of my body. I okay. thought that it was uh, pleasing my body only. I thought it was casual. How we think about sex, I believe, has a lot to do with our upbringing yeah. and uh, some learned behaviors. And even though I had a Christian mom and she was a wonderful woman, her mother uh, was a, 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 a wonderful woman, yes, but she came up in a more strict environment that sex was a taboo. Do not ever do it unless you're married. Well, my mother then became a little opposite. She wanted to kind of loosen the reins a little bit. So her thought and her teaching was um, it's normal and it's wonderful and uh, you should experience it mm. to be opposite of her mother. Well, I think that the proper thing is always to teach exactly what the Bible says. And so from my mother's teaching, that's what I got. It's wonderful. It's it's something that we should all experience. It's a part of life. And it is. Yes. But the other part of that, 
it's safe to do it in the confines of marriage, a committed relationship. And so that's how pretty much I went about my 20s. When I became 30, I understood um, what sex was really about and how connected you can become to someone and how hurtful the tear would be when the connection is broken. And so I started going through seasons of abstinence, having had yeah. four children by this time, seasons of abstinence, and God began to deal with me. And a lot of people uh, think that abstinence is for a bargain ship with God, mm. but it's not. It's actually uh, just to get in line with God. It's, it is a part of obedience. When you maintain abstinence, you can see things clearer than you would if you're intimately involved with someone. And you talked about desires. They're not necessarily sexual desires all the time. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Most of the time, they're desires for intimacy. Mm -hmm. And that's that's true and it's real and there's nothing wrong with that. We just have to learn how to practice that desire in the right context so that we would be in line with God so that we can stand in line for his blessings. Yes. Now let's run with desires for just a moment because I agree that it's not always just uh, desires for sex. Uh, I've heard this old saying from long ago where it says women give sex to get love. Mm -hmm. Men give love to get sex or at least their idea of love. Sometimes the desire is not to be alone, not right. to be lonely for right. companionship or to stop the boredom that's happening in my mind mm -hmm. or to, to whatever it is, whatever that desire is, or to be like my friend or to, to fit into a crowd. You know, the desire not always has to be, uh, I just want to please the flesh. Now there is that, right? There is that. But sometimes when I talk to ladies and I wonder about this, I, I ask them, why do you continue to give your body to these pleasures when you know that your your body is not your own, your life is not your own, you've been bought with a price. Are you willing to make the commitment to the Lord more than you're willing to make the commitment to your desires? And a lot of times they'll say, yeah, I am committed to the Lord, but I really don't want to be alone at night. See, I think the problem is that we compartmentalize a lot of our feelings and our thoughts. And even though you just said, biblical truth um we have so many other relative truths that yeah. we're faced with and mm. while you were just saying but you know that your body is not your own here's the whole world saying on the other end yeah, yeah. that's your body you can do whatever you want and there yeah. lies this whole argument uh of so many other platforms and so many other rights that are now being discussed in the law uh you understand what i'm saying yes mm -hmm. and really you have to buy into the fact that you belong to god that god is the creator of heaven and earth and everything in it if you never buy into that idea then you will think um i'm my own woman this is my body i can do whatever i want with it um you know, all of those, all of those things yeah. that are in my mind that I won't say because this is a Christian program, but all of those <laughs> things, right? But we are grown. I, I can, yeah. I, listen, I pay my uh -huh. own, I, you know, mm -hmm. all of that. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> but that's not biblical truth. Yeah. And so if you never wrap your head around it, uh, mm -hmm. then you're always going to be operating under a different assumption. Oh, I love the Lord because they're thinking of the emotional feeling of the uh the feeling that they get when they're in church or the yeah. feeling that they get when they talk about the lord or when the lord comes through for them yeah. uh but that's not all there is to it it's a whole other piece to loving the lord and and yeah. that submission to him and, and an understanding that he's loving and kind but he's righteous yeah yeah, he's holy. He says, be holy for I am holy. I was thinking as you were speaking in Romans, it talks about, um, see, I'm getting old, over 53. It went, it went so fast. But wait a minute. I was thinking about, oh, if you love me, you'll keep my command. Right. And, and sometimes I think maybe when we're giving the gospel, maybe we are giving it as a free ticket to heaven versus this is a relationship with a real person that has a real standard and guidelines now for you to follow. Now, ladies, I'm not saying that it's easy. I remember when I was single, 
And I remember going through this, this trying to be celibate and trying to work this out. I always say it like this. I say it. I always ask when I'm teaching at conferences and I'm teaching uh, ladies, single ladies, I always say, hey, have you ever had a chocolate covered strawberry? And they're like, oh, yeah, girl, chocolate covered strawberries are mm -mm good. Now, how do you know that that's mm -mm good? Because you've tasted it. Right. And then I say, well, now here's the problem. So now you have tasted of this forbidden tree. You mm -hmm. have engaged in sexual intercourse. And so now your body has been awakened, Song That's of right. Solomon. It has been awakened before its time. So mm -hmm. now that it has been awakened, now you've got to figure out what to do with this. That's right. And we've, I think we've got to teach women, if you keep saying you love him, then that requires you to get this body under control, bring it into subjection, and it's not easy. And I wrote, you know, I wrote a book about that. that yes, there are you did. Steps to do that because it, you don't get turned on like that just overnight. Uh, the first time, of course, you know, you have an experience. It's like, oh, oh, what was, oh, oh my, what was that? You know, whatever. And it probably, you know, wasn't anything to write home about. I'm just saying, just to be truthful. But it's then called the real more life. you do it, <laughs> a real conversation. Oh, real the more conversation. you do it. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, but it happens over a time span, right? Well, backing away from that, there are steps you have to be intentional about protecting yourself against that. You have to make up your mind and every day start protecting yourself against it. There are things that you have to intentionally do. The other thing that I wanted to uh, make clear is that obedience is not for God. Hmm. That's, not, no. that's not for him. That's for hmm. you. You yes, know, and I cannot tell you the peace that I gained. Yes, when I started practicing abstinence. Uh, I like I said, I could see things clearly. I could I could pick up a line where yeah. I couldn't pick it up. And when it was time uh, to go to leave a friendship, uh, I could pack my bags and go ahead and go because I never unpacked them. So exactly, you know, you know, it was. I nothing. said, pick up my Gucci and go. Flee, right. it was nothing to clean up. So um, there was no attachment. That well, there was maybe you know friendship, but I could see it. And I'm telling you, it it takes the blinders off when you get intimately involved with someone. There are blinders that just come on because you actually are so uh, involved with them. Uh, that you start making excuses for yeah red flags exactly right and you and you act like you don't see them and then mm -hmm. hindsight when you look back i should have i knew i i, I should have listened yes but your body was already connected to that person and so god says don't put yourself in that predicament because yeah. that may not be the one person that i want you to be with if you subscribe to, that may not be the person for you so don't do that. So obedience is not, oh, God is trying to put me in a fence and he don't want me to have any fun. No, he wants you to enjoy life and yeah. to the fullest. But you can't do that if you're breaking pieces of yourself off here, there, and everywhere. And then you find yourself trying to collect those pieces. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. you can't because you've yeah. spent them all. Yeah. And I always say to the young women, you're giving your body over. You're using your body up uh, like used goods. You're allowing this one and that one and this one and that one to just use your body and use your body. And ain't no telling what things are happening with your body as a result of this one and that one. I mean, there's all types of things that can happen as a result. We do know that there are consequences for sin. And I've said this over and over and over. You can choose your sin, but you can't choose your consequences. And not only can you not choose your consequences, you can't choose how long they last. That's right. You That's can't right. choose how long now you are going to be emotionally connected to that individual that is right. no good by no man's standard. Right. And you are connected and you can't wonder why because you keep going back to that well. That's you right. keep drinking of that forbidden wine. That's and right. then you're wondering why you can't disconnect. Now, I want to talk a little bit about boundaries. And listen. I'm not going to get caught up in all of the, the everything. We have all these different circles that have issues with boundaries. But I want to bring this into the conversation just to say okay. there's there's hard work to do, but then there's practical work to do along with the hard work. But before I do that, ladies, if you're just joining us, I'm talking to Mrs. Penny State, and we're talking about sex and the single woman from a biblical perspective. If you would, hit the like button for me right now. Like, share this with someone who you think might need it. 
follow. And if you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe. And let me say this, we want it to be a conversation. Toss your questions in here as we have time, as time permits, we're gonna try to answer them, but jump on in with your conversations. Now, let me round back uh, a little bit. Okay. I wanna go back to talking about the heart because uh, yes, we can talk about practical things you need to do. We can talk about boundaries. We can talk about all this stuff, but I wanna talk about the heart. If your heart is not set towards God, the things of God, the ways of God, and I mean really set, mm -hmm. you're gonna struggle with this information. Okay, here's my own personal, my own personal thought. Uh, at one point I had to fake it till I made it. All right. I had to just go ahead and get in line. Mm -hmm. Even though I didn't understand um, all that God was asking me to do, why, how everything was connected. I cannot say that when I first, uh, my first season of abstinence, I cannot say, oh, it was because I was so much in love with God. No, I just got tired of it. I got tired of coming up with the same thing. And so yeah. I took that one piece of scripture that said, all right, stop. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that one piece. Yeah. And I just, and I just obeyed. Yeah. And as I began to obey, and block that out and do some practical steps to, to keep in line with God. Um, I start wanting to know more about him. Yeah. And so it was like, um, if I can, that I had to, to get in line first. Yeah. And then I could see more of God. I could start seeing more of God and understanding what he was saying. And then my heart started, uh, going towards him chasing after him if you will wanting to know more and then uh i started falling in line in other places in my yes. life so I, you, does that make sense it makes sense i think what you're saying is sanctification see we don't always understand it i call it the acronym acronym for faith forward action and trusting him. Mm -hmm. You're not always going to see, you're not always going to understand. But one thing you know is you trust him. So you do what he says. Mm -hmm. And I like that if we would take small steps, mm -hmm. he said, no, put that down. Then just no, put that down and then go back to church, go to discipleship, group, right. start learning about why he says no and put that down. Oh, that's for marriage. Sex is good, but it's good within its right container. Right. It's just like fire. Fire is absolutely great within its boundaries. Mm -hmm. You let it outside the boundaries, it burned down your whole house. That's right. That's it's the same thing. So I completely understand what you're saying. Yeah. Obey and then learn and then obey and then learn some more. Right, exactly, exactly. But That's I think it well, was pretty much for me. I would love to say, oh, I just fell in love with God and I just stopped sinning and I just stopped rolling around with all of these different, <laughs> oh, and I, no man, no man was found. So, I got tired of that person walking up out of my house and saying, okay, I'm going to call you when I get home. Come on, make it real. And, and it wasn't the, the, the idea that he wouldn't. No, he did, but your home should have been with me. It should have been a, you know, we should share in the, the same home and, you know, let's go get in, get up and get some cheese and crackers and, get, right. and join each other through the night and the right. next morning and I have your name. Yes, you know? <laughs> so exactly. And the relationship flourishes from there. And so when I got tired of that, um, and then at, at the time I had children. And then what do you do with that? I mean, do, the, do you knock on the window? You know, <laughs> wait until that right. babysitter. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. and how many people can they see in your bedroom? Exactly. You know, do they yeah. see Uncle Tom? Now that's important. Then Uncle Tom. Okay, this Uncle Billy. I mean, how many times can they see that before it starts forming an idea in their own mind and how they work relationships out for themselves in the future? And then they see that and then they see you at church jumping high, shouting high, rolling all around on the floor. And then Sunday night in the middle of the night is something else. Right. They it's get up go to the restroom and they see somebody in the kitchen with apple juice and, and yeah. their undergarments. And what? Yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't 
Yeah. Now some will say, oh, well, they never run into my children. I always have, you know, because that was me. I always had provisions, you know. You can make provisions for the flesh if you so choose. I mean, you can go all the way out, but at some point, you've got to stop and ask yourself. And this is this is truly, sisters, I would beg of you to ask yourself, do you love God more than you love your desires? Mm -hmm. Let me do see you those provisions. Yes, go ahead. I had provisions too until I came up pregnant. Well, you can choose your sin, but you can't choose consequence. Huh, how'd that get there? Huh. You know, it's just so much that you can do without it being revealed. Yeah. Even yeah. if you have provisions, eventually something is going to come up. Yeah, my grandmother used to say, what's done in the dark will come out in the light That's at right. some point. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But and, even and, and it's not impossible. It doesn't hurt. You know, you think that, oh, I'd die. Ooh, if I couldn't, I'd just die. No, no, I'm, I'm, no, you won't die. I didn't die. I'm now, I, now I'm, I, that's what I was going to say. Now, I, I, I call it real life for a reason. I, I really felt like I was going to die. <laughs> Listen, I, I had real boundaries. To, this was way back, way back, way back when, many eons ago. And I remember I used to have to have my girlfriends. They came over and took all the phones out of my house. That was when, you know, they were plugged into the wall. You know, the phone was in the wall. Most of y'all don't know that about that. But this is when the phones were, and they would take the phones and go so that I couldn't make that light, late night phone call. Y'all know what you call that. Mm -hmm. So for me, it required being honest with someone. Well, let me start over. First, right. being honest with myself. That's right. You are outside of the will of God mm -hmm. and you need help. Mm -hmm. Being honest with myself that I know I read, I go to church every Sunday, I see what it says, but yet I'm not willing to bend the knee mm -hmm. and do what it says. Then I can bring others into my life and ask them to help me. But you can behavior modify all you want. But if you don't have a heart change and a That's desire right. to please the That's Lord, right. mm -hmm. this thing's going to chase you down and hunt you down and you're going to fall for it every single time. Right. You have to replace whatever what you're missing. You've got to replace that. Uh, you you have to. You can't just, oh, I'm just no, that's not the idea just to stop that. No, your your body, your heart, your mind, all of that is still going to be desiring something. And you have to fill that up. If you pour something out, you have to fill it up. You have to fill that container up. And you must fill it up with the right thing. And, and that is with the word of God. Amen. Now, so ladies, don't forget, jump in here, throw us your questions. Uh, are you getting something out of this, ladies? If you're getting something out of this, just throw up a heart or, or something to let us know you're getting something out of this. Now, I could hear a woman that probably thinks like I used to think some 35, however many years ago. She's going, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I saw that. Sweet immoralities. I understand but uh, you don't understand. What do you say to her? You're not the only one who has burned with desire. Come on. Um, and you're looking at someone who, yes, uh, that is, uh, the body is very formidable. Um, and you have to be intentional about, just like you said, the safeguards, you have to be intentional. So there is a way to date. Uh, there's a way to talk. Uh, and then there's nothing wrong with cutting. If, if you're going to make this change, there's nothing wrong with cutting everything out. Yes. Facebook yes, will yes. be there. Your mm -hmm. friends, if they're your friends, will be there. Whatever guy that you're interested in, he will be there if he's true and real. Throw yourself on the mercy of God. And here's how I say do that. Get involved with something else other than what you're doing. Turn your life around. If you're an alcoholic, stop going to the bars. Okay. You know, stop hanging out with your friends who are drinkers. So you mm -hmm. have to change your atmosphere and you have to be intentional about it. And there's nothing wrong with a drastic change and it may hurt you. But yeah, if you have to turn off the phone, if you have to, uh, I had pictures of my pastor and his wife all through the house. Mm -hmm. Just eyes on you everywhere you go. Yes. You know, wherever you sit, there they are. <laughs> <laughs> what you doing? You know, that big head. You know, that's what you doing? You, 
you go in my wherever you are, there will be my pastor and his wife there. So they're all around. Whatever you have to do to get your mind right. Yeah. Um, down to the underwear that you wear. Yes. Come on. I'll tear them up. Uh, yeah, and so there's there's no way you will ever see what's under uh, this <laughs> this pair of jeans, sir. Yes. Never, because I know yes. what I did. You have to be intentional, and then you have to pick out who you will spend time with. So there there's a way to do it, um, and it will hurt you, and you will cry because you will want some. You will wonder. If God is seeing you, yeah. uh, you will wonder what happened to the person who said he loved you so much and da 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 and all of that. And it will be painful. But then the light will come in. And then you will know that God's love is greater. And you will grow because yeah. you will come to know that, hey, I think I love something more than I love myself. Yes, come God. on. And now you're starting to go through another sanctification process where you're loving God more. And he's revealing more of himself to you. And he's just mm -hmm. throwing blessings out at you. And they may not come in the form of a man of this type of that type. Yeah. All, but if he's looking at the desire of your heart, according to his word, and he said he would. He said, if you seek me, then I'm going to be looking out for you. I'm going to be looking out for your heart in so many words. And I'm going to be, you know, ready, ready to, to bless you. And when you start earnestly seeking him, he's going to put things in perspective for you. And so all of those nights where you're crying and all of that, those things will lessen. All of the cold showers will lessen. It's going to be very aggravating, very hurtful. People will talk about you. Yeah. People who have known your past will talk yeah. about you. And, mm -hmm. and there's just a plethora of, of changes uh, that you'll go through, ups and downs and all of that. But at the end of the day, um, when the Lord opens up whoever it is that he has for you, you're going to be so yes. glad because of the person that you're going to be. Yes. And just the discipline of it. You understand? Mm -hmm. Just to have, just to be able to say that uh, I can't be controlled by anything. That's it. Like it said in Nothing. The future, that that I, I got. I, so so it, it, it goes over in other areas of your life. That means if I can control this, I can control what I say. I can control what I eat. I can control how I respond to people. I can control so many other things because God has not given us the spirit of fear, right? But of power, of love, and uh, self-control, some of them say. A sound mind, some of them say, but some of them say, some of the scriptures say self-control. He's given you that. And so when you start dominating your own life in that respect, by I'm in control of what I say and what I do, and mm -hmm. I choose to do all for the glory of God. Watch how doors start opening up for you, and it's almost like you're going to be living into in a fantasy world, and people won't believe all the blessings that are coming your way, and they're going to be spiritual blessings, and they're going to be peace, and, and it's going to be all kind of blessings that you never thought that you could really obtain, and uh, and God will give those to you because you've sought after Him. And you put yourself in line for those blessings. Yes. And, and, you know, I think the greatest part of this is don't do this for to receive something. You know, that that's just the thing I would warn the ladies. Don't do something to receive something. Do something because you did receive something. Mm -hmm, that's to receive right. a relationship through the gospel with Jesus Christ. Just, you know, don't always try to manipulate God and get and get and get and get. He's your genie. He's, you know, you go from having, you know, uh, what they call that a sugar daddy here on earth. And now you're going right. to try to make God your sugar daddy. Right. You know, I'm just going to trade one for the other. No, let's go into a relationship with an almighty God that has requirements and standards. Yes, we will reap the benefit here. He's going to give us rewards in heaven, all that good stuff. But that's not why we serve him. That's not why we please him because he we're bought with a price. So I just want to warn them of trying to manipulate God. That's right. Oh, I'm going to stop doing this. I'm going to go be celibate. And then the minute that don't go your way or he didn't give you what you wanted or you that man, that husband doesn't show up and you've been celibate six weeks and a day, you you know, you're like, oh, well, okay, well, then God didn't give right. me what no, I wanted. No, it's, it's not it's not a bargain ship with the Lord. It is, right. you don't, you, you're not in righteousness because you're trying to get something from him. You will get something from him, but it's far greater than things that you can see and things that you can hold in your hand. Uh, it, like I said, it's a peace of God and a peace with God. 
and it's the the relationship that bring all the rest of the stuff that's yes. in your way and that's what you really want because not only will you need that in your single life you will need that hear me well hear me well in your married life come on you will need the the peace the relationship the closeness the intimacy that you have with god in your single life you must have that in your married life because even though god is going to give you someone wonderful and all of that and he's going to be a great guy and you love him and you adore him and everything is just right and the chemistry is right and all of that you still need to he's not god mm -hmm. and so there will be sometimes that he's not going to want to be bothered with you and he's not going to say the right thing all the time and he's not going to do the right thing all the time he's human and so are you and so this is the time that you build your relationship with god so that you'll have a reservoir to go back and get some of the things that you have learned about god and that you've learned about yourself in order to move in order to not curse that dude out it's the stuff you learn now in the singleness yeah, that yeah. holds your tongue and gets you up and making flipping pancakes and still making up the bed and going to work and doing what you have to do because it's this time that you build your relationship with God to carry yeah. you over into the relationship with your husband. Yeah, and you're walking by the fruit of the spirit. Really, is what we're right. talking about is developing the fruit of the spirit because That's listen, right. self-control Mm -hmm. is a part of the fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have no self-control as a single woman, what makes you think you're going to have self-control as a married woman? Because you wonder, how does adultery happen? It happens That's because right. people want what they want when they want it, and they want it more than they want a relationship with God or right. with you. So this is how this happens. If we're not walking by the fruit of the spirit, if God doesn't mean more to us than everything. So you're saying right now, well, I got a hole in my heart. I don't want to be lonely. I don't want to be alone. I don't want... I want companionship. I want this. I want that. Understand that even I know some married people that are lonely because God is the only God. Mm -hmm. He is the only almighty, all righteous, all knowing, all wise, never fail you, never let you down. He's the that's, only one. So any man that might possibly come into your life or in and out of your bed, none of that's going to fill the hole in your heart. It's a relationship with Jesus, Jesus Christ. That's right. None of that will fill the hole. You can take this hole that you've been trying to fill through sex mm -hmm. and you go run off and you get married. That hole is going to follow you down the altar That's right. and follow you back to your new house and That's follow right. you into your marriage bed. And guess what? You still got a hole in your heart. That's right. Laying next to someone who you thought that was going to be able to fulfill you. And not that he's not a great guy because I love my husband to death. He's wonderful. Amen. And I'm grateful. I'm so grateful. Uh, but I'm so glad that that the lord is my lord i'm yes. so glad of that and, and i'm so glad that my husband honors the lord that's a whole different conversation yeah that's I'm another so glad yeah that he honors the lord and so uh you're right you're always going to have to abstain from someone or something always. yeah so self-control is a part of your life period it's a part of the christian walk it between your tongue your eyes your mind your heart your yes. walk it's it just you cannot get around it. There's yes. no way to get around it. And there's no way to put a Band-Aid on it. It must be a relationship. Now, ladies, come on with your questions because we're about to wrap this up. Questions, thoughts, comments. Anybody, is it helping you? Come on, let us know. Hand clap, uh, heart, something. Let us know. Is this blessing you? And don't forget to hit the like button and share, follow, subscribe if you're on YouTube. Now, Mrs. Staten, we've been talking about God a lot, but what about the lady who doesn't know God? Would you give her an offering? If I were just talking morality, um, it's still good not to give yourself out to any and everybody. If you just take God out of the picture and I'm just a moral person, it's good to have some type of standard the problem with that is our standards and our morals change depending on what we experience so the best thing to do is get to know the person whose standards never change does that make sense yeah to, to, to know the person who sets up the moral standard 
that does not change because uh, you could be a great person and he could be a great person. But if you're going on mor morality only, uh, morality is kind of relative. And yeah. so what's right to you may not be right for him. Right. And what's right for him may not be right for you. And so you're always going to be walking through a life that's kind of mixed match uh, yeah. because uh, it depends on what you're feeling this day and what happened and what happened in the past and all of that. The only stable thing uh, is God and, and, and his, his knowledge and his love. More than that, far beyond whatever your body is feeling, whatever your heart is feeling. And I, have, I think I'm the queen of being lonely because I have felt that. And I can tell you that is a real thing. And mm -hmm. it's very painful. Um, you need uh, eternal life with God more than that. Yeah. Come on. And, and it seems like a big, big thing. And it is a big thing. But eternity is larger than all of that. You will get over being lonely. Hmm. But you will never get over separation from God. Come on. You, you have to have eternity. And once you get that part in line, everything else is going to shrink to its appropriate size. And so I urge you to put that in the corner. That's real and that's true. But what you really need is the God of eternity so he can help you maneuver through this life. And then he can meet you on the other side and say, come mm -hmm. on home. Does that make yeah. sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that is so important, ladies. And you can make that decision right now. You can choose to do what you need to do right now just by asking God to come into your life. Come into my life, God, and save me. It's a simple, simple step. Saints, I hope you're praying for everyone that will be watching this. And I pray that, um, ladies, if you've been playing church, I want to leave you with this point. And what do I mean? We've heard this all our life. Don't play church. What do I mean? I mean, right now, okay, pandemic, maybe you are jumping out of bed, pushing a button and you're watching. Maybe you're back in church. Ignore the last year and a half of our life. Let's just say you've been, you go to church when you're supposed to go to church, check, checked off the box. You give, you give your 3%, I said three, you give your 3%, check the box, did that. You know, you might even serve if they ask you to pick up some plates or something. Ah, all right, I'll do that at the dollar store. Check, I did that. Now, here's the problem. You did acts of service. You didn't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Right. right. So I'm, I'm, I'm asking you, the scripture says, examine yourself to see if you are in the faith. Only you and the Lord knows. Please don't take away from this that I said you was going straight to hell. That ain't what I said. What I'm saying is, in my life, there was a point where I had to stop and say, girl, you just playing church, singing in the choir. You're going straight to hell via the choir stand. At some point, only me, only you can stop and examine. Do I have religion or do I have a relationship? Mm -hmm. See, religion propels you to do those things that check the box. Religion propels you to get up and go to church. Religion propels you to give a, a, you know, a tip to the Lord every now and again. That's what religion will do for you. Relationship says, you know what? You're not my husband. My body's not my own. I belong to the Lord. And, 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 and if this thing here takes me out, I am going to serve him all the way out. That's I will right. give him nothing but my best. I will not continue to defile my body. I will do what thus saith the Lord. See, that's what relationship will do for you. Mm -hmm. Relationship will tell you right now. It will have you tap that brother on the shoulder. Excuse me. I sir, you, you, you've got to go. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, man, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so sorry. You know, we've been doing this. We've been kicking it. But I, I'm going to need you to get on up and kick some rocks because I love Jesus Christ. And I didn't know that that's what I was supposed to do. But now I know. See, relationship will have you change everything. It'll change the way you dress, not for outer stuff. It'll change the way you speak, not to please people. It'll change everything because you love the Lord God because he's that's first. Right loved you. That's right. That's right. That's right. Now, sisters, I'm going to leave you with this and we're going to get up out of here. Here's a thought. Maybe you're saying, all right, I hear y'all. I hear you, Mrs. Staten. I, I, I feel you. But 
I don't wish to stop doing what I am doing. Okay, let's say you profess to be a Christian, all right? What I want you to know is you are putting a stumbling block in the way of that man. Maybe he's not a Christian, but you're the Christian. And you want to, you know, give little cute scripture to him. And y'all want to have a Bible study and do all this other stuff. Y'all want to talk about the Lord. And then you lay down together. You're putting a stumbling block in his way. You're defrauding your brother. So I would love for you to think on that. If you really love this man, the way you say you love him, then you'll offer him a relationship with the Lord. That might include you. It may not. But you know what? For eternity's sake, it's more important that he gets a relationship with God than a relationship right. with you. That's right. Last words, Mrs. Staten. Uh, check us out next Saturday. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I, have uh, I have a book coming out. All Red right. Tell us about your book real quick. Okay. Red Flags. What every or what single women should know. It's 30 days of exhortation. And I kind of walk you through some ideas about being single, about God, about you, about other people, even about your walk uh, through abstinence, if that's what you choose to do. Absolutely true. You got to choose that. It's for your sanity um, and for your relationship with God and for an eternal walk with God if you're not amen. saved. Amen. Amen and amen. Now, the book is called Red Flags and they can find it where? Um, it's coming out next week. So follow me, 52.ministries on Instagram, All right. and you'll get that information. All right. Well, ladies, this has been great. Thank you for joining us, and I hope that you will join us for the conference. You can click the link in our bio and register, 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 register. And listen, right now, right now, right now, take your hand, smash, smash, smash the like button. Share this, please. Before you get up, before you move, share this with someone so they can share it with someone that can be set free from those things that do so easily beset us. That's Amen. True. Amen. See you next week, ladies. This has been Dr. Vanessa Ellen and Mrs. Penny Staten on Real Life Conversations. Bye, y'all. Ladies. <laughs>